Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Welcome back to CBSN. National security experts are racing to fix a hack on Microsoft's on-premise security servers. Upwards of 30,000 U.S. entities were breached in the hack. State and local governments are scrambling to shore up potentially infected systems. Microsoft reportedly knew about vulnerabilities to the system as far back as January. Last week, the company released a patch protecting users from similar future hacks. However, the patch does not fix issues for those who already had their network breached. Last year, intelligence officials learned of an ongoing Russian hack targeting the nation's top government offices. However, this latest hack could have a lingering effect on average Americans who were unable to download the patch in time to protect themselves. Joining me now from Washington is Michael Daniel. He is the CEO of the Cyber Threat Alliance. Michael, welcome. Great to have you with us. So the White House says this is an active threat. Microsoft is apparently working closely with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency to resolve the issue. But do we know who is behind these attacks and where the situation stands now? Well, initially, uh, Microsoft assessed that the perpetrators behind this were a group that they call Hafnium, which they associate with the Chinese government. However, at this point, because of the release of the vulnerabilities and the ability for anyone now to exploit them, I would say there's a huge number of potential adversaries that could be using these vulnerabilities and conducting this kind of intrusion on a wide variety of networks. And that's ongoing. There hasn't been any uh, successful attempt to, to close these vulnerabilities yet. Well, so I suspect that many organizations have taken steps to close uh, the vulnerabilities. They've implemented the patch. Um, they've searched their network for um, you know, ongoing indications of compromise and have addressed those. Um, but many organizations still have not patched um, and are, you know, still trying to figure out if they've been compromised. And if they have been compromised, they've still they are still working to uh, eradicate the adversary from their from their network. Um, unlike the uh, solar winds uh, incident, uh, this is one where the uh, actors are targeting each individual, each network individually. So each network owner has to go and address the uh, address the issue individually. So tell us more about exactly who's being targeted, because an estimated 60,000 companies and organizations around the world have been breached thus far. How does that affect the average person at home who happens to have a Microsoft computer? I mean, how can they know whether their information is being collected or whether they are victims of this hack? Your average uh, small uh, business owner, your individual, this is not uh, a vulnerability that is being uh, exploited against them. This is, uh, be this is a vulnerability in uh, what are called exchange servers, which are really uh, software that actually runs an email system. So it's primarily used in larger networks and enterprise systems where you actually have IT personnel that can maintain and run uh, the exchange server. Um, so those are those are the ones that are actually going to be vulnerable uh, to this. Um, now, in terms of who's being targeted, it's a huge array of different types of companies, and it may have started out uh, much more limited to the kinds of companies that uh, the Chinese would want to collect intelligence on or steal intellectual property from. Uh, but now, I think it is spread to just almost being a free for all. Uh, for anybody that has one of these kinds of on-premise uh, exchange servers. So, you know, if you are a small business owner or you run a small organization, how would you know whether you've been breached in the attack and what steps need to be taken if you were hacked? Sure. So, I mean, from from just an incident response standpoint, you want to, uh, if you think you are running on-premise uh, exchange servers. Uh, you want to locate those servers and determine if they need to be patched. And Microsoft has issued uh, guidance on which specific versions of Exchange are vulnerable. Um, and then you can download and implement the patch. If you can't patch immediately, then uh, both Microsoft and various uh, security vendors have uh, 
written out some implement, some mitigations and workarounds that you can implement until you can patch. Um, and then you can hunt for signs of compromise. Uh, Microsoft and other vendors, including many of those with the Cyber Threat Alliance, um, have issued instructions for how to search for potential compromise on your network. Uh, the Cyber Threat Alliance blog um, on our website has links to all of our various members who are offering resources on this threat. Um, then if you do find signs of compromise, you should activate your incident response plan um, and probably bring in some outside help from places like Microsoft or other incident responders to uh, help deal with the compromise. All great advice. Now, you know, Going back, Microsoft confirmed the company was aware of some of these vulnerabilities back in January. Why did it take so long for the company to, to fix this and, and to let people know about uh, this danger? You know, how long should it take Microsoft to address something like this? Actually, I, I would say in this case, this is really not all that long at all. Um, it takes a while. When you, when you first become aware of a vulnerability as a vendor, uh, you have to understand what that vulnerability does. Uh, then, you have to fix, uh, then you have to figure out a way to fix that vulnerability that uh, doesn't break a whole lot of other things in the software. Um, then you actually have to test that fix to really make sure that it doesn't break a whole lot of other things in the software or other things that run normally run on computers. Um, and then if you're in Microsoft's case where you've got this huge customer base, you have to position that for distribution uh, and release. And then the other thing is you know that once you release it, other adversaries can then begin, once you release that patch, other adversaries can begin re, uh, reverse engineering that vulnerability. And then they can begin to exploit it for people who haven't patched. So you know that once you release that, there's a clock that starts ticking. And so you really want to make sure that you're positioned properly so that when you go, you can be all in. So I, I actually think Microsoft deserves a lot of credit for recognizing the seriousness of this vulnerability and moving rapidly to, uh, to issue the patch. I mean, and would you say the fact that, you know, we are all, so many of us are working from home and we are accessing work servers, you know, on laptops at home, um, they, would you say that this is, uh, you know, going to affect a lot of those systems that are being accessed outside of a central area? So I think that in broader terms, what it really continues to show is that uh, what has happened through the pandemic is that many organizations are just that much more dependent on their IT infrastructure. And any disruption to that IT infrastructure, whether it comes through uh, an exchange server or ransomware or any sort of disruption to that IT makes it even that much more difficult for them to get business done. Um, and so I really think the pandemic has hammered home the, our level of digital dependence uh, that we have as a society and how we really have to uh, raise our level of cybersecurity across our digital ecosystem if we want to drive down our vulnerability uh, in light of that dependence. We are so dependent, you're right, on our, our internet systems. Well, Michael Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your expertise. Thank you for having me.